All right, basically for imperfect information, what we want to do is to look at the examples or, or the situations in which we can apply this argument because in a certain situation, there may be many reasons why market failure is occurring. So for imperfect information, one case study we can look at is the case of merit and demerit goods, right? Governments may assume that they know what's good for people and they may assume that they know the complete benefits or the complete cost of their measures for the providence of their good. Now this, of course, can be absolutely wrong, right? As we all know. Uh, because this can cause too many or too little, too little resources to be produced in the market and this is allocatively inefficient. Now, imperfect information can also occur in terms of imperfect competition as firms may not be aware, for example, of the most efficient method of producing a certain good as compared to another firm which has a, a super effective method and that's lowering their costs, right? Now, this, of course, can cause friction in the market and is another barrier to entry, right? Consumers may have imperfect knowledge of the prices and the qualities of goods in the market and this can cause misallocation of resources as uh, consumers may be buying more from a firm that, that they are more used to compared to a firm that is pro uh, producing goods at a lower cost, for example. And uh, this is basically where a consumer makes decisions without the full frame of the market. And they also can be blasted with advertising. And we're all familiar watching the TV and we... We are blasted with the same uh, good being shown to us again and again. Now, naturally, we're inclined to, when we go into the supermarket, to look for that good because we are we, we're only familiar with that good. And this is basically what happens to the consumer. He's only given a certain frame of the market and he makes decisions with that frame. Now, this can be boiled down to the consumer's cost-benefit analysis on whether they're willing to search for the information. Right? This is what in economics you call a search cost. Uh, something perpetrated by an economist called Stigler. You can research it if you want. And basically, consumers will continue searching until the benefit of searching, basically whether they're getting the lowest price, is equal to the cost of searching. Now, we all know sometimes searching for the best price can get tiring, right? We don't know exactly what is then. And, and do we really want to go look at every place that exists in order to find the lowest cost, right? This is what we call a search cost. And that, that's what happens sometimes in a market. But now, now with Google, for example, and, and rather, or rather the whole internet, that's changed quite a lot. The cost of searching has lowered dramatically and uh, this allows information to be more uh, available for consumers. And this is a point you can make whenever you're making your arguments.